I'm often asked, can I just walk into a testing facility, take the SHRM CP or SHRM SCP exam, and bam, I'm certified? The short answer is no. There are application, auditing, and scheduling processes, and most HR professionals must take the time to prepare for it properly. Hi, I'm Christina Danforth with HR Jetpack, the number one SHRM education partner. And in this video, I'll help you start your SHRM certification journey by providing the top 10 best practices to prepare for a SHRM certification exam. This list of top 10 best practices is based on the fabulous feedback and advice from HR Jetpack students who passed their exam and are awesome instructors. Keep watching this video to learn from your HR peers who have taken the journey to earn their SHRM CP or SHRM SCP. And remember to stick around until the end because I'll also provide a bonus tip identifying one of the most overlooked yet essential aspects for preparing for a SHRM certification exam. Before we begin, let's determine if you are in the right place. Are you eligible to take the exam? If you haven't already reviewed SHRM's eligibility criteria and confirmed you meet the requirements, visit SHRM.org now. If you are not eligible, your attention should be on meeting SHRM's eligibility requirements first, then come back. The information in this video is for those who have confirmed they are eligible to apply for and take the SHRM CP or the SHRM SCP exam. It's important for you to know that the intention of this video is to help you optimize your chances of passing the exam. I'll provide the most important actions and advice we've learned from our students and instructors. However, if you can't take all of these actions or follow all of the advice, it doesn't mean you will fail. Take away what you can and don't let anything stop you from achieving your goal. You can pass your exam. Okay, let's get started. Best practice number one, be committed. Once you've determined you are indeed eligible to take the exam, you need to answer the next three questions. Question number one, do I need a SHRM certification? Let's be real. Not everyone needs an HR certification. For instance, maybe you have a master's degree in HR, landed a senior position, as an HR business partner, and are at the end of your career. Do you need this certification? Maybe, but maybe not. Question number two, do I have the time? Be ready to commit at least 80 to 100 plus hours over 12 plus weeks to this journey. Without the commitment, you will find yourself cramming the last week before the exam. I've heard too many HR pros regret not spending more time studying in the weeks leading up to their exam day. Cramming won't work. The time commitment depends on your experience, but remember, even if you are an incredible HR professional with years of experience, you must put the time in. Where you invest your time can vary, but may include reading, going over practice questions, reviewing flashcards, participating in a study group, attending class, and anything else that prepares you for exam day. Using a timeline will help. More on this later. Question number three. Is this a good time for me? This question can be challenging. You can't predict what will happen in your personal and professional life. Be realistic when determining if your life situation is conducive to such a commitment. Don't skip these three questions. It will be too easy to rationalize later when things get difficult. Don't give your future self any reason to rationalize why you should quit. You need to know the answer is yes to all three of these questions to have a lasting commitment. Best practice number two. Create a timeline. Okay, so you are now committed to this new goal of becoming a SHRM certified professional. You may be tempted to tell your family your new goal and post it on LinkedIn, but it's important to take a step back, understand the overall process, and build a timeline. 
This timeline will not only guide you, but also give you the milestones you need to stay on track and achieve your goal. To start building your timeline, begin by identifying what dates are out of your control. You don't control application deadlines and exam windows. Your timeline is anchored by these dates, which are set by SHRM. Typically, there are two exam windows each year, and the application deadlines correspond to each window. Let's start with SHRM's application deadline. The dates that SHRM accepts applications can be found on SHRM.org. Make sure the exam window fits your schedule and write down when you plan to apply well before the deadline. Then, depending on how you are going to prepare, you should figure out how much time you will study on a weekly basis. Once you have a general idea of how much time you will use to prepare, pick a date within the exam window and write it down. With these two dates, you now have the beginning of a personal timeline. The rest of the timeline is up to you. The other milestones will depend on your schedule and method of preparation. If you are going to join a preparation program based around the SHRM learning system, more on this later, you want to ensure this program ends close, but not too close to your exam date. About two to three weeks after the program ends is normally enough time to continue studying and addressing any weaknesses. The content will still be fresh in your mind. Moving on to best practice number three, create a study plan. Once you've figured out your timeline, the next step is to create a plan, a study plan. Start by moving your timeline milestones into your calendar. Be very specific with these dates and times. You can start by identifying how much time you'll spend in class each week. If you're an HR Jetpack student, you might want to set aside three hours per week and join a specific class at a certain time and date. Now, it's fairly easy blocking out time on your calendar for a class with consistent meeting dates and times. You know exactly when it starts and when it ends. But where do you go from here? After you've blocked out three hours of class time, you should set aside another three to four hours each week to continue studying outside of class. Try to keep your study blocks consistent. You want to know when your study blocks are without needing to always look at your calendar. The less complicated, the better. Next, divide your study materials out evenly. Whatever materials you are going to use, look them over in a general way and estimate how much time you will need to get through each week. Write the specifics within each study block in your calendar. If you're taking an online SHRM certification exam prep course, much of that work is done for you. Your instructor will tell you what content to study each week. I recommend reading a section in the book, like Leadership and Navigation, logging into the online SHRM learning system to complete a quiz associated to that topic. And for every wrong answer, you should go back and review that particular section to fully understand the right rationale. It's important to note that developing a study plan is very personal. It's all about you, your life responsibilities, and your needs. There are many different factors that could be impacting it. You must create a plan that's flexible, and works best for you. Now you have a study plan and you've entered it into your calendar. However, let's be realistic. You're not the only one who has influence over your schedule. What about those around you who impact your time? Those folks need to be on board. Not only do you need their support, but they should also know what to expect. Setting their expectations is key to staying on track. That's why best practice number four is to build your team. Your team isn't SHRM. Your team isn't necessarily your HR colleagues. Your team members are family, friends, employees, and anyone else who impacts your schedule. Whether you have kids, a partner, senior parents, pets, or other personal commitments, juggling those responsibilities with studying for the exam is tough. You've got to rely on others to help you follow through with your study plan. 
We had a student who would lock herself in her home office for two hours nearly every night. She would tell her family, this is mommy's study time. Do not disturb unless it's an emergency. It was difficult, but her spouse and daughter, her team members, understood why it was so important. It was necessary for her to set the expectations with her family before she began preparing for her exam. Getting your supervisor and specific coworkers on your team may be necessary as well. You may need to take an online class during work hours or need to take some time off to prepare. Having them understand why it's so important will go a long way. Get them on the team. The team must be on board before the preparation begins. You don't want any surprises while you are focusing on your preparation. Make it fun. Give your team a name and be sure your team members are a part of your celebration once you pass. Moving on to best practice number five. Find an HR community. Your community is different than your team. Your team members are those who influence your time and attention. Your community is made up of those who are currently preparing to earn their SHRM certification or have already earned their SHRM CP or SHRM SCP. There are a number of benefits to joining a community with people who have a common goal and are on a similar journey. This helps in at least two ways. Knowledge transfer and motivation. Learn from others who have been where you are. Discuss your concerns. Find out what worked for those who have passed. The knowledge and advice you can get from each other is amazing. When you see someone in your group post, I passed my exam today, it will motivate you. It makes your goal feel much more real. Where do you find a community? You can go to a local SHRM chapter, an HR meetup, an online study group. HR Jetpack has a private online study group for those who enroll in our SHRM certification exam open prep program. It has hundreds of active members. You don't necessarily need a formal study group. It can be as simple as a few of your coworkers preparing for the SHRM exam together. HR can be a lonely profession. Don't go at it alone. Join an HR community. Time for best practice number six. Know what to expect. At some point in the process, you will feel overwhelmed and uncomfortable. This is completely normal. Nearly everyone goes through the what have I gotten myself into phase. This is a good thing. Remember, there is no growth in comfort. Being uncomfortable is a sign you are pushing past what you already know. Knowing what to expect on exam day is key in helping reduce test anxiety and getting over that uncomfortable feeling. There are two methods available to take the exam, either in person or remotely. If you take the exam in person, you'll want to visit the testing facility ahead of time. It's important to get an idea of how long it'll take you to get there, and you don't want to be late. There is a set of security protocol you'll be asked to follow upon your arrival. The testing center administrator will ask you for a valid form of identification. You'll be asked to sign a logbook, and you will be assigned a personal locker. You cannot bring any personal belongings into the testing room. You are only permitted to have your ID. Before entering the testing room, you will be scanned with a metal detector wand and asked to turn your pockets inside out. Then the administrator will walk you to the computer on which you'll be taking your exam. If you decided to take the exam remotely, it's a slightly different series of steps. Security is still very tight. Before your exam day, you'll need to run a system readiness check on whichever computer you will be using for your exam. You'll also have to download and install the ProProctor application. Before you begin your exam, you'll need your testing location to meet a set of environmental requirements all available on SHRM.org. Plus, before your exam can be launched, you must complete a self-check-in process. During this process, like the in-person check-in, you'll need to provide a valid form of identification. When that is complete, a ProMetric readiness agent will greet you and guide you through the additional security checks. 
Once these are complete, your proctor will launch your exam and observe you throughout the testing process. Note, you will be able to speak with and send messages to your proctor. Your exam experience is broken down into the following segments. Confidentiality reminder, introduction and tutorial, 110 minutes for the first section, another 110 minutes for the second section, followed by a brief survey. Once you've completed the survey, you'll receive your preliminary results. With all your hard work and dedication, picture the word pass on the computer screen. You will find a way to overcome that uncomfortable feeling. Know what to expect on exam day. Stick with your plan and rely on your community when needed. Time for best practice number seven. Understand the SHRM BASC. The SHRM BASC is an acronym that stands for Body of Applied Skills and Knowledge. It is a behavioral competency-based model that was developed with the help of thousands of HR pros like you. Both the SHRM CP and SHRM SCP certification exams are rooted in this model. The information in the BASC drives the exam and anything from it may be on the exam. Every student should start their preparation by reading and understanding the body of applied skills and knowledge. This model has nine behavioral competencies, which are segmented into three clusters, leadership, interpersonal, and business. It's important to understand how we use these competencies as HR pros while completing work-related functional activities. The 14 functional areas make up the bottom of the model. They're also separated into clusters. These functional areas make up the technical competency. In other words, these are the different facets of HR we need to understand and know to be in the HR profession, also referred to as our HR expertise. The technical competency has three HR knowledge domains, people, organization, and workplace. The 14 functional areas fall into each of those domains. In summary, the Sherm BASC encapsulates the primary behaviors, knowledge, skills, and abilities we must demonstrate as HR pros to support both the performance of our workforce and overall organization. Best practice number eight, use Sherm's materials. SHRM is the source for the SHRM BASC, the SHRM exams, and the SHRM learning system. When it comes time to select preparation materials, it doesn't make sense to go anywhere else other than the source, SHRM. SHRM developed the SHRM BASC. SHRM manages the SHRM CP and SHRM SCP exams based on the SHRM BASC. SHRM manages the SHRM learning system aligned to the SHRM BASC. And SHRM partners with specific HR partners like HR Jetpack. The SHRM learning system is the only system containing practice questions that were previously on the exam. The SHRM learning system is also optimized each year to incorporate current legislative changes. HR Jetpack is an official SHRM education partner. Because the SHRM learning system is the best system to prepare for the SHRM certification exams, we include the SHRM learning system in our SHRM certification exam open preparation program. Before registering for a SHRM certification exam prep program, ask the organization if they provide the SHRM learning system. If they are hesitant, move on. Getting ready to take the SHRM certification exam is very much like training for a marathon. That's why best practice number nine is build your stamina. Let's review the similarities. The average marathon runner completes the grueling 26.2 miles in about four hours. You are given about four hours to complete a SHRM certification exam. It takes between 12 to 20 weeks to train for a marathon. You should give yourself a solid 12 plus weeks to prepare for a SHRM certification exam. If you're going to run a marathon, would you simply get up one day and pound out four hours of running? Nope, you would take the 12 to 20 weeks to build your stamina before race day. It is the same for a SHRM certification exam. Would you simply get up one day and sit for a nearly four hour HR certification exam? Nope, you would take the 12 plus weeks to build your stamina before exam day. 
So how do you build your test-taking stamina? You must spend extended periods of time answering practice questions. Answering a question or two a day is a good practice, but it's like training for a marathon by sprinting every day. You also need to incorporate long runs to build up your ability to focus for long periods of time. All of our students begin with the pretests. The pretests are important for two reasons. First, the results provide a baseline for current knowledge and understanding in all the key areas that will be tested on the exam. Secondly, taking the pretests help build mental stamina and sets the tone for the rest of the preparation. Our program contains over 2,700 practice questions. There is plenty of opportunity to take those long runs. In the last three to four weeks before your exam, we recommend building several hours of test-taking time into your study plan. The SHRM Learning System, included in our program, take it to another level by providing a practice exam with questions that were previously on the actual SHRM CP and SHRM SCP exams. This practice exam is designed to closely mimic the real exam. It's the closest experience to the actual exam available. Building your test-taking stamina is one of the most important parts of preparing, yet it's most overlooked. Don't make this common mistake. Start building your mental stamina early. Best practice number 10. Get ready the night before your exam. It's a day before your exam. Should you take the day off from work to study all day? The day before your exam can be nerve-wracking, but cramming won't help. Instead, here are a few activities we've gathered from instructors and students to help you ease the anxiety. Number one, be organized. Whether you're taking this exam remotely or at a testing facility, it's important to prepare yourself both physically and mentally. HR Jetpack instructor Cheryl Brown Merriweather recommends before you go to bed, lay out the clothes you will be wearing on test day. Prepare your breakfast in advance. If you're taking the exam in person, plan on getting to the testing facility early. And if from home, have your testing environment ready for security inspection. Most importantly, set your alarm. Number two, focus on your health. Do something to relax and relieve any stress, like taking a light walk, stretching, or even going to an exercise class. Consider meditation. Also, eat a good dinner. Stay away from coffee, tea, or any beverage that contains caffeine. Several of us here at HR Jetpack love chocolate, but we don't recommend eating it the night before your exam. Number three, visualize the pass. Stay positive and keep the right mindset. The mind is a very powerful tool. Visualizing yourself in the testing center and correctly answering the questions is a great way to refocus your anxiety on a successful outcome. Use the nervousness for good, not evil. Number four, get a good night's sleep. The previous three recommendations are all helpful in getting a good night's sleep. Avoid naps, sleeping aids, and stimulants. Make an appointment with yourself to get ready for bed a little earlier. Now, the bonus best practice you've all been waiting for. Know the proficiency indicators. What is the most overlooked yet essential aspect of preparing for the SHRM CP and SHRM SCP exams? Proficiency indicators. When we first use the term proficiency indicators with students, we're often asked, what is a proficiency indicator? Professionals are expected to have a certain level of expertise or proficiency in each competency, subcompetency, and functional area. The word indicator is just as the name implies, an indication of expertise expected for that competency, subcompetency, or functional area. You will find the proficiency indicators in the SHRM BASC summary document. This document defines the competencies, subcompetencies, and the corresponding proficiency indicators. There is one set of proficiency indicators for all HR professionals and another set of proficiency indicators for advanced HR professionals. 
Start by reading everything in this document to get an understanding of how it works. Understanding the proficiency indicators will help you in at least two ways. First, they are the key to correctly answering situational judgment items, which most HR professionals find to be the more difficult questions on the exam. And secondly, Understanding the difference between the proficiency indicators for all HR professionals versus advanced HR professionals will help you determine which exam to take, the SHRM CP or the SHRM SCP. If your current role relates to more of the proficiency indicators found under advanced HR professionals, then you will most likely want to apply for the SHRM SCP. As we like to say at HR Jetpack, you don't need to be perfect, just proficient. Pursuing your SHRM certification will not be easy. The journey will feel long and tedious, but certainly well worth it when you add those lovely credentials to your resume and online profile. In addition, research has shown HR professionals earn more money when they up their game by getting certified. We know money isn't everything, but it sure helps. One more shout out to our students, instructors, and members for sharing their feedback and advice so we could, in turn, share it with you. We know you can do it, and following these best practices will help get you there. Above all else, remember to keep at it, and you will make it happen. I hope you found this video helpful and wish you the best of luck on your journey to becoming a SHRM certified professional. Remember to tell yourself, I will pass my SHRM certification exam.